The Santaran Experiment, Part 1, starting in 3, 2, 1, go. So, here we are. We are watching The Santaran Experiment. We I've, seen this story, I've seen this story a lot, back. actually. And, I don't know, Joey's really happy because Antonio destroyed a copy of Season 14. <laughs> And everybody on See, Twitter, yeah, like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy, like, how pissy thing. everyone is getting about it. Dude, there was one guy in his comment section who was just like, Fuck, bro, what the hell? I understand you're mad, but there are some lines we just don't cross. God damn, I need to lie down. <laughs> I was just like, I. I Oh, yeah. and, and, like, and, and, people, and people were taking the talents of Wing Chang one seriously when he was like, we, uh, he's a, well, I can't remember what he said, but it was like, we don't tolerate racism, and he like scratched up the talents of Wing Chang desk. <laughs> And then, like, and then, like, there were two sides in the comment section on that one. The half of them were saying, uh, were saying, like, oh my god, you're destroying one of the Blu-ray dis- discs. And then the other half was saying, like, yeah, fuck racism, because they thought he was being serious, destroying talents. <laughs> I mean, oh. regardless of what you think of talents, Yellow Face is a bad move, but it doesn't like, it doesn't like destroy the story itself. I think. Oh, by no means. By no means. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite Doctor Who stories ever. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, I'll be the first to admit it. It's probably really problematic as far as it hasn't aged well. But it. Well, the, I, I mean, there, I still the, really enjoy I, it. <sighs> The only actually questionable aspect about it is the one character in Yellow Face. But even then, Lee Sen Chang as a character, and what is the actor named? John Bennett, I think? Is that the, the actor who played him? Like, the performance is just so damn good. Yeah. Yeah. Because even then, people like try to like point to the other lines of, 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 of him. I guess that we all look the same, but like... It's literally Lee Sin Cheng as a character commenting on, well, oh yeah, people are, people are racist, aren't they? <laughs> people also point to George Lightfoot saying racist stuff, but like, you're in Victorian times, bro. Yeah, it's literally just Robert Holmes recreating the time period. And honestly, making fun of it, because you have like that one lady who passes by um, Lee Sin Cheng and like calls him like, what, like Mr. Chin Chin or something? <laughs> um, um. Yeah, and it's like, like I don't know. You could, you could cringe at it. You could, you could, you could. Hate yeah, but it. doesn't like in response to that, Lee Sun Chang just like hypnotizes her in some. Yeah, she gets, yeah. She gets her comeuppance anyway. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. We got to do talents as a commentary. I fucking love that story. I would have been more willing to do that for Halloween than fucking horror of Fang Rock. I mean, I, I suppose we could change it. I mean, Jacob's going to be on it, so we could always do that if you want. I mean, do you think Jacob would have a problem doing Talons of Wang Chiang over Horror of Fang Rock? I mean, I know he really likes Horror of Fang Rock. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll check with him. But I, mean, I'm, I, I mean, I will admit, you know, that me not being a fan of it is not the popular opinion. I'm probably not right in not being a fan of Horror of Fang Rock. <laughs> But you are not right. Jacob gets really <laughs> defensive, like stupid defensive every time I say I don't like it. <laughs> Cuz it's a great story, man. <sighs> Part of what makes a good horror story for me is I like to care about the characters getting killed and Horror of Fang Rock does not do that. It just Horror of Fang Rock pisses me off for the most part. <laughs> Would would you say Horror of Fang Rock is a uh, is is a lesser story to another Terrence Dix uh, story that that you're a fan of that most people don't like the Eight Doctors? Um. Oh. See. Come on, at, seriously, kind dude. Of... <laughs> at least give me the look. Rest. All right. Fang Rock. Fang Rock is miles above the Eight Doctors. Objectively. No, Brian, no, 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 right, no. No, listen to me. Listen to me, Joey. Okay, so the Eight Doctors. I hate a lot of it, and I love a lot of it. And, like, my initial opinion is no longer the opinion I hold on it. <laughs> like, I remember it fondly, but I recognize that it's fucking shit. 
I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a really fun read because it's Terrence Dix. Like, it is really fun. His, his prose runs like grease fucking lightning. Like, it's amazing. Um, but the story, man, like Terrence Dix literally okay, shit. So he literally shit out, that, half, shit out that plot. <laughs> about half of that book is total ass. Like, <laughs> let's let's list off the things I don't like about it. I'd argue I a don't, little over. <laughs> I don't like... I don't like the fucking opening scene with Baz. I fucking hated that. Mm. Um, I don't like. There, wait, 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 wait. There's a Black Adder reference though, and that makes it a ten out of ten. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else don't I like? <laughs> I, I, I do like the first Doctor bit, and I no, like that is the worst bit. I hate that one so much. Really. Okay. Dude, that's so bad. Where shit starts to get really problematic for me is the third Doctor one. Oh, oh yeah, that, dude. Oh, that one's ass. Well, you know, that, that one's okay up until it actually meets three. Yeah. When he meets and then, three, and, 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 and then Dix is, is like, and then Dix is like, post Sea Devils, you know, over halfway through the Pertwee era, he still fucking hates every single human around him and would murder them and, 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 uh, without like a second thought. <laughs> Anyway, Just... so the... I and really you think Dixon have a better handle for... on that, be, being like you know the, the one of the guy. one of the main people who wrote for Pertwee. Yeah, that's that's really shit and inexcusably shit. Um, we, we, I did we, like we never, his. We, we never talked about the second Doctor segment, which I which I do think is okay. It's passable. I can do with that. Um, but then I do like the State of Decay section. With I love the State of Decay. Section. I really that's like that probably one. my favorite bit of the book. That one's kind of fucked up too, with um, with what they do to the doctor in that one. That's great. Like the yeah, fourth doctor. I, that I, is. I really yeah. like that bit. Um, um fifth, fifth doctor say when he can get to fuck, man, dude. I hate that one. Well, here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing with the fifth doctor section. The fifth doctor section wraps up the char- a character art for a completely useless villain in the story, and it's just shit. And um, you know the. It's a follow up to the five doctors. So oh, that's course. right. You know, I, I I was just thinking about the shitty like Santaran bits and everything, but no, no, no. I forgot about that. The random like. So of course, Hanford asshole. Like, shoehorns in the yeah. time scoop and like taking villains out of time. The Raston warrior robot ends up on the Eye of Orion. Oh yeah, or oh, yeah. And, 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 and they like try to give that one. And they try to give that one Santaran like uh <laughs> like a noble death or something. He like thanks the doctor for dying in battle or something. <laughs> Yeah, this, um, this, there's that. The fifth, do- this, the fifth Doctor bit is retarded. I like how yeah, he characterizes yeah. six, but the sixth Doctor bit gets really convoluted and confusing yeah, for no reason. Oh yeah, and, and they and they go back on the whole um, oh yeah, yeah, you haven't read it, of course, but they go back on the whole uh, Barusa thing, Blood Harvest. I know you wouldn't know about that, but still, um, what is the Barusa thing from Blood Harvest? I mean, it technically still works. So in Blood Harvest, um, they officially like free Barusa from from his uh, from his eternal life in the Five Doctors, um, and it's a really great moment. I, I, um, like it's actually like handled really well. You know, Dix doesn't like totally just like just like bring Barusa back from the dead <laughs> like he does in the Trial of a Time Lord se- segment in the Eight Doctors, just to like have him fuck off at the end of it. Um, but it's, I but it's kind just... of like how the Barusa works out in the Trial of the Time Lord segment, though. What I don't like about the Trial of the Time Lord segment is the Sixth Doctor just disappearing, like, a quarter of the way into it. Well, yeah, because because has... Dick, cause Dick realized that he actually had to write an Eighth Doctor story. <laughs> what do you think of the Seventh Doctor bit? I'm very conflicted on it. It's fucking because... stupid. But I'm very because conflicted Because as on someone it. who hasn't read the Virgin novels... I'm fine with it, but I hear. I think well, I heard. I'm, assume, something. I'm assuming in that respect you're referring to the master stuff, right? Yeah, I'm. So, so, so for me, like, I don't care about the master stuff because for me, I'm like, okay, well, he gets the worm, and and then we do the new adventure stuff, and then he goes to Scarrow and everything. So fine, I could deal with that. But I, I'm more referring to the Seventh Doctor's characterization and that, and how he just like randomly like springs out of his depression because he met the Eighth Doctor. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's that's yeah. a little weird. Yeah. 
don't know. Then I didn't have a huge problem with it. Oh, no, oh, also, and then the plot just fucking ends, and, uh, and and Sam runs onto the TARDIS, and you have, like, the most forced, generic companion entrance scene ever. <laughs> It's it's literally the the plot of the eight doctors is the eighth doctor gets amnesia and goes on a trip down memory lane literally just to get to his memories back. Is it ever? No, it was a it was a trap set by the master. Some sort of psychic yeah yeah. They don't even, they don't even like elaborate on. It. It's just like oh yeah um it's like after the TV movie a trap was set by the master and you don't go into like any more description. But now the doctor has lost his memory. <laughs> I don't think it ever gets resolved in like a good way like it like the doctor losing his memory of Gemma and Samson and Terra Firma is handled. So anyway, we're watching the Santarn experiment. Yeah, and... we are. <laughs> I kind of don't want to talk about it because I watched it a, a few days ago before I knew we were doing this. <laughs> um the Santarn experiment this is a story I put on when I literally can't think of anything else to watch. Well, it's a pretty easy story for me to just randomly throw on. I'm a, I'm a big fan of just, like, throwing on two-parters when I know I don't, like, when I dedicate the time to, uh... To, like, I mean, there's... Story. Here's the thing. There's nothing particularly offensive about it. I don't understand, like, the total bile and hate towards it, because, it, I mean... It's not good, but it's not, it's not like, I really don't like how, um, how you wait until the end of part one of your two part story to reveal the Santarans. I like the cliffhanger though. It's a good cliffhanger, but damn, you couldn't have done that like halfway through the episode. Yeah. Yeah. And it also suffers from that, uh, that old, uh. The, 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 the age-old the villain, conundrum of having the, the villain name the villain in the, in the title and the uh, the cliffhanger is the villain reveal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I wonder who it could be. <laughs> Resurrection of the Daleks. You have the retard Dalek just going exterminate. <laughs> Crash zoom on Peter Davison's face. <laughs> Oh no! It's the Daleks! I never would have guessed! Oh, so I'm pretty sure, like, I guess you would know more about this, but I was reading Dead Romance recently, Lawrence Miles' last Benny book, mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty sure he ties it into the EDAs. How so? Spillan. Because he speaks of um, how the Time Lords are trying to escape our universe and into a bottle universe where most of the book takes place. Um, and they succeed by the end because they're trying to get away from these things called the All High Gods, which have been a villain in the Benny novels for a while. Um, um, I'm wondering if that's the same war that I hear about in the, the war EDAs. in heaven. It could yeah. be. Because there's a lot of really weird, fucked up shit that is mentioned in Alien Bodies. I haven't read enough of the Faction Paradox stuff yet, because I just haven't gotten mm -hmm. to it. To because apparently the, main... the full extent of the bullshit that happens in the War in Heaven, but because apparently the main character in Dead Romance, Christine Summerfield, becomes a big part of the Faction Paradox stuff after she escapes the Bottle Universe she was created in. The the time war, as it is referred to in the actual books, I think it's only called the War in Heaven now, so it's not confused with, you know, RTD's time war. Um, mm. It's, yeah, it's completely, like, groundbreaking and, like, I don't want to say canon breaking, but it it pretty much is like you have to assume that the universe is reset at the end of it, and it's sort of left on an open ended note in the Gallifrey Chronicles. I think this is just stuff which I've is which up is why basically what I'm guessing is why 
I'm guessing that's why everyone basically but, disregards the EAs when it comes to like comparing it to the big finish stuff. Because <laughs> some of those events still happen in the main universe, but they happen differently. Um, so that's why you get things like it's still technically canon. It's just another like big in-universe reset, like the Big Bang, but actually resetting the universe. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so like there's stuff later on in the EDAs I know where they reference that the Eighth Doctor has a bunch of alternative futures depending on how the war in heaven turns out. So like he he looks in a mirror at some point and sees the Rowan Atkinson Doctor, <laughs> the Shalka Doctor, and a really sort of I think I think it has to be towards the end of the book run because they they do sort of describe a uh, Christopher Eccleston like figure. Mm. So it God, everything I hear about the EDAs just makes me less and less excited to read them more. I don't know. I, that shit kind of does excite me though. <laughs> well, it's exciting up until you hear like, oh yeah, and then there's like a giant universe reset at the end that isn't actually explained within the books. You just have to assume it happened. I think I think they set it up in the book. They I I'm not sure if it if they're clear on whether or not it 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 succeeds is the thing. And just sort of based on how big finish turns out, which is which is how it is, you sort of just have to assume that it did succeed. Hmm. Cuz I I guess if you think about it, not knowing if you do a big in-universe reset like that, the actual version of the character who resets the universe wouldn't know if he succeeded because he no longer exists. Which is kind of a cool idea, if you think about it like that. But I, I get the sort of disappointment that... I mean, it. I, it, it, it definitely feels like one of those things that I'll be more okay with as I actually, like, see it laid out in front of me. It's like, but it's, yeah, like no, those, um, it's, it's like one of those big ideas, like, when you hear about Lung Barrow and the other and everything, and you're like, oh, that's kind of, like, icky and messy, and, like, I don't want to delve into the Doctor's past like that. But then, like, you actually see it executed properly and over, like, a long period of time, too, not all crammed into ten episodes. Um, and it actually works out. <laughs> not all crammed. I feel like that was a uh, that was a dig, <laughs> Brian. Really. Brian, you know exactly what that was. <laughs> feel like that was a a sut well because you said it sort of uh, quietly enough and sort of flowy enough that maybe someone didn't wouldn't have picked up on it if I hadn't <laughs> pointed it out. But uh... <laughs> I mean, come on, like the Carwell Master Plan. If you include the VNAs as part of that fucking, gigantic scheme, fucking, the EDAs like, have longer to set up their shit. The EDAs are like seventy-three books long. The fucking no, 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 no. I'm VNAs talking about like, like, Her like the Hermit Master Plan as a year has ten years as a whole to like do its entire arc from the start of the McCoy era to when Lung Barrow was published. <laughs> ten fucking years. <laughs> Why uh, is that funny? I don't know. But the, uh, <laughs> ten, just trying to imagine the fucking the fucking TV show drawing out an arc over ten years nowadays is yeah. I'm not talking about the TV show. I'm talking about the books, though. I know, but you, no, you're right. That's why it fucking works. It happens over time, not all in yeah. like one condensed bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, it be it becomes something that you become more comfortable with, like as it's presented slowly, piece by piece, to you. And um, and the same is true of the EDAs, I think. Uh, that's at least... yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I wasn't disagreeing on the EDA point. I was more talking about series twelve. Um, yeah, like I'm sure, like I'll, I'll appreciate what the EDAs does more as I Although, go through them. But where I'm at I right was... now, I've only read the first two books. I'm still, you know, I've got a long way to go, of course. I will but... say this: there is a strand of books right around the. Um sort of 20th to mid 20s that just is, has a fuck ton of faction paradox bullshit happen mm. I mean I I'm think... kind of into faction par I'm kind of into faction par paradox from what I've heard oh um, dude I love 
I'm not the biggest fan of alien bodies like everyone else is. I mean, I do really like it, but... All I all I know about alien bodies is apparently there's some alien that shows up towards the end of it that I really don't want spoiled for me, but like I know that's the the deal breaker for you. It is the deal breaker for me. Hmm. It's fucking. <laughs> I okay. Really don't, don't yeah. Like that yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't don't say anything else because the <laughs> I don't have very all important. I say I, 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 it is. I, I, <laughs> All I will say it is is it feels very shoehorned and unnecessary and just draws the book out. I've I've done a very poor job in my in all of my book reading over the past how long have I been reading Doctor Who novels? Uh, almost three years. Um, I've been doing. I've done a very poor job of of ke- of keeping things a secret for myself over the years. But Alien Bodies is alien that shows up towards the end. I have then, no clue what the fuck it I, is. Then fucking never. Until you read it, do not watch my video on it. <laughs> I I will not. I will not. So yeah, no, I. Uh, um, yeah, it, it's not God's gift like everyone says it is. It, well, actually, I'm an edgy contrarian most of the time, so you'll probably like it. Um, <laughs> um but oh, so oh shit is Sam Jones? My God, fuck. She has no character. Like, you know what, dude? No. She has no character. I like her <laughs> in Vampire Science. She's no, 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 no. Because any, any, any sort of like character drama that could come from Sam Jones and that is made from the characters around her. Like, 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 there's that whole conversation that Kramer has with her about like the nature of the Doctor and everything. Where like, she's talking about like, oh yeah, I, I knew Ace and the, and the Seventh Doctor. You know, he's not, he's not what you think he is. And and I like that, but that doesn't tell me anything about Sam's character. That's just. Kramer warning Sam about the Doctor, and then nothing is changed by the end. Actually, well, here's you'll if Sam gets offensive in some books, like like Vampire Science probably isn't the best I've seen her handled, but it, it also isn't the worst. She what gets would you, what would you personally oh, fuck, say? She is, is so bad in the Body Snatchers, dude, and in Genocide. I really don't like her in Genocide <laughs> either. Well, what, what would you personally say is her best appearance that you've read? The best appearance that I've read, I actually don't like her in Alien Bodies, which is weird. Um, I'd say her best appearance for me personally is Option Lock. Okay. You know, I've had I've had a copy of Option Lock for the longest time because Jacob just had an extra one, so he gave it to me. Um, it, was, it was the first EDA I actually owned, so... I'm quite excited to finally get to it. Because <laughs> it's I been do sitting like on my shelf forever. Because I do... Because Option Lock is very much a post Cold War story, and it's like very, very, very scary, and uh, it's a Justin Richards. So I, I have trouble reading Justin Richards. As... See, I, I know, I know, we've had this conversation before, but Richards is a is a writer that I have a very shaky track record with as far as audios go. But I love almost all of his books, like. His books I'm are not, really here's, good. here's what I say. I don't like his audios, but like as a writer, he's pretty good. Like as a novelist, he's pretty good. I just have a hard time staying focused on his books for some reason. His prose does not read easy for me. I'm telling you, man, read Theater of War. Theater of War just it it, it glides. It's so easy to read. Well <laughs> I remember there was a stretch of time where I wasn't particularly. Oh, wait, 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 wait. big cliffhanger. Oh. Big cl- we're not supposed to know. We're not supposed to know who it is. Uh, brah. Brah. Oh, this, sh- this should have the invasion brah, of time. Brah, this should have the invasion brah, of time brah. music. <laughs> My, uh, we ever lose the Santarin experiment, that's your recreation of the soundtrack. Gotcha. I'm going to scrap all copies of the Santarin experiment right now. <laughs> just so we can use that for the reconstructed cliffhanger well I, I also want your version of the invasion of time part 4 cliffhanger music. Did, I, did I do that? you did fuck yeah dude <laughs> dude this is the second fourth Dr. Santaran commentary we've done in a row <laughs> It's it'll be the only other one we do well, yeah, exactly. I just think it's funny that we happen to land on these two, like, right next to each other. The Santaran Experiment, Part 2, starting in 3, 2, 1, go. 
so we've barely talked about the Sontaran experiment because <laughs> there's just not I've, there's just I've not much to talk about. about. Well, right, and I've already talked about it for a full seven minutes um, on my own <laughs> channel, and I've watched this story way too many times this year. I this is a, this is very much a story that I should be watching once every maybe two years, and I have watched it three times already. <laughs> I have so much trouble with that, dude. Like, if I rewatch a story too much, at some point it just gets like bang my head against the wall. God damn it, not again. Ooh, so the Benny book I'm reading next, Tears of the Oracle, I'm pretty sure is the one that confirms that Brax is the Doctor's brother. Nice. Yeah. Is this the same guy who played Lynx? It is, Kevin Lindsay. Now, that fucking cliffhanger is really good because you see the fear in Liz Sladen's eyes as the Suntarn mm. unmasks itself, but then yeah. it unmasks itself, and she says <laughs> Lynx, and it's like And it looks no, nothing like Lynx. Not Lynx. Not fucking Lynx. <laughs> <laughs> but it is still Kevin Lindsay, and Kevin Lindsay also plays the Suntarn that um, well, Styra refers to in, in this story. Well, it's just like the skin tone's different, man. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a totally different costume. Yeah, well, bar like, the the actual suit. Like other, you, the face shape is different enough on its own, but like, surely, you know, it's hardly even brown. Like it's, it's yeah, it's like, this, like it's like this Link, mud gray. Links has the bigger blacker cock. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why Links is the only great Santaran. I like the one in Two Doctors a lot. I do not. I love that performance. I also like the look of the costume. A lot. Mm, what the that. one with the goatee? <laughs> the one, in, the one in the Two Doctors. Yeah. Yeah, the one with the goatee. <laughs> yeah, the goatee Santaran. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite Santaran, dude. <laughs> in all of Doctor Who. Oh come on, Lynx is so much better. Lynx is alright. <laughs> how great how great is the Time Warrior too? I fucking love the Time Warrior. It's alright. Dude, I love that story. It's great. I have an issue, dude, with Top stories that points. are with with stories that are hyped up for me. I just fucking they never live up to expectations. <laughs> Why how was Time Warrior hyped up for you? Oh, fucking people were ramming it up my ass, dude. Everyone was like, oh, it's so fucking good. And I, I finally got around to watching it uh, years ago now. And I, I was just like... And that's a cult classic Doctor Who story. Why? It's amazing. I love it. I don't know. I was, I was, I was like, it's, it's, it's good Doctor Who, but like... I guess I'm just not a fan of the Santarans, man. I'm not. Oh, neither am I. Fun. Neither am I. The time, the time Warrior and the Two Doctors are the only good TV Santaran story. In my the opinion. Two Doctors might be the only Santaran story I genuinely love. See, I I love the Time Warrior. The Two Doctors. I'm like, okay, it's really good. It's great, actually, but I don't love it. I love the Two Doctors. Like I, sim a lot of people fucking hate the Two Doctors. I know. I mean, it's... What is with that? Well, I think it's... There's no real reason for there to be a multi-Doctor story in season 22 other than fan service. Like, yeah. it, it doesn't fall on an anniversary. You had one only a couple years ago with Peter Davison. It's like... I, I don't know, but, but I think just like... just. Just taking the the story's content there at its face value, like I think it's I think it's great. I mean, I'm not denying that I, I really just fucking like it as a story, but you know, there's there's no real reason for it to exist as far as like a multi doctor story goes. Mm -hmm. Like it's not it's not 
and it's not even like a particularly the universe is in danger time is fucking fracturing or anything like that it's just it's just your sort of typical doctor who story except for some reason there's two doctors instead of one Mm. i like it though yeah yeah it's great i i really really love the androgums for some reason (laughs) that's that's fair I I just like the idea. Jacqueline Pierce is an excellent actress, and like that is true. Shock Eye is just fucking cheesy. Goodness. Oh, I love Shock Eye. Yeah, no, I I I just like it. I can't help it. <laughs> it's like right up my alley of just sort of pulpy fun filler fluff. You know, speaking of Santarans, I've never seen the Shakedown BBV film. I I tried to watch it once. There are some BBV films which you can watch. Like the Auton trilogy. It's not good, but I can watch it. I do really want to watch the downtime one though. I hear that's actually actually pretty good. <clears throat> I've heard I've heard good things about downtime. It's just Oh dude, I can't I cannot get past the really shit production values, man. Mm. Like, oof. Oof. but but Zygon porn though. <laughs> oh, are we gonna talk about how <clears throat> Jonathan Carley got cast as the War Doctor? Officially? Hell yeah, I fucking love Jonathan Carley. I I I haven't like spoken with him directly, but I don't know if you have. But um, I'm not now. But but, but I mean, like, but we have a mutual friend, right? We do, and we've both been been involved in a project that he hell, was I, hell, I did the first. I did the first uh, short trip reading for for Edward. Um, I think I I think I did the second one, the rock. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that was yeah that was the second, and then I think the third one was the War Doctor one with Jonathan Carley, and, uh, well, and yeah, yeah, he's oh, brilliant, fuck, dude. He's so he's good. So good. He is like, so good, seriously. If they were going to recast that role, they would have had to find someone who sounds exactly like John Hurt, and Jonathan Carley certainly sounds exactly Hell like John yeah. Hurt. Oh, he's so I good. Mean, and also, that, that scene that they released, Post Night of the Doctor, perfect. Fucking uh, love he fucking He fucking nailed it, dude. I was... Because, you know, as soon as I saw it, I was like, ooh, shit, that's a little worrying. I hope they made the right decision with the cast. Well, I, I, because... was, I, was, I was already okay with the idea. I was like, okay, well, cool. You know, more War Doctor content. I like I like the War Doctor. And, and hey, I mean, you know, that that's a good way to get around it. It's not like John Hurt could have played a young John Hurt, you know. <laughs> in, I, don't, in... I don't have a problem with recasting actors who are recently deceased. John Nor Hurt's been I. dead for, yeah. like, four years now, though. Almost. But anyway, um... I don't have a problem with that as long as the performance is, you know, respectful and respectable. Definitely, and Jonathan yeah. Carley's definitely fucking is. Mm-hmm. Oh, and and the and the guy's thread today. Um, I don't know if you saw the thread that he had on Twitter today. Um, just talking about like you know taking on the role and everything. Just so great, such a humble guy too. <clears throat> oh no, dude, he's he's awesome. But yeah. you know what excites me. More than that, Joey. What is that? Is the fact that they cast him, and you know why that excites me? That means that fucking people who work at Big Finish are probably sitting in their chairs listening to what we do as well. Oh, Which... probably, but I don't like to put that thought in my head because it kind of scares me. It scares me a little bit too, but I'm also like, oh, that's uh, oh, oh, oh I'm not, it is kind of fucking. And I'm, cool, and I'm not though. saying that in like a way that like, oh yeah, what do they think we're like ripping them off or we get sued? No, I'm saying that like in like a, like oh yeah, they, they probably think we're really shit. <laughs> well, they probably think we're really shit, but yeah. I don't know. They probably look. Here's what I think. They probably look at it with a sort of like fond remembrance of their audio visuals days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, as. As we've seen, they've started taking, you know, people out of the fan base who have sort of built up their names recently. Uh, I think, I think they're keeping an eye on the next generation of sort of dogs to do stuff. Oh, with. definitely, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's, I'm just, I'm just really fucking happy for them. 
Oh yeah, big respect. Yeah, love it. Love Jonathan Carly. Uh, and, 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 and four boxes of him. Hell yeah, I will take it. Dude, I'll I'll be fucking buying. Hell yes. Hell to the yes. And 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 also, I mean, Colin, we're definitely gonna get a War Doctor War Master story at some point now. Oh, yes. Yes. Also, have you noticed how fucking exciting like the first six months of next year's Big Finish releases are? No. What are they? Give me. You got you got forty A series ten. You've got Masterful. You've got Ninth Doctor Adventures, Delic Universe, um, Gallifrey Time War Four, War Doctor Begins, Stranded Two. Um, oh yeah, Return of the Cybermen, the Doomsday Contract, Master with Eric Roberts. There's so much. Oh, and uh, First Doctor Adventures Volume Five. Like, it's a really exciting first half that's of the a, year. That's actually a really good lineup. It's a really, yeah, seriously. It's a There's really a lot of good. shit in there that I want to buy. Oh, and, uh, and Out of Time, too. Oh, fuck. I haven't listened to Out of Time yet. Mainly oh, because really I've been, to to I've been it's, focusing I mean, like, on Time Lord Victorious. I mean, it's, Out of Time is, is it's the first story, at least. It, it's, like, simple. It's light. It's fluffy. But it's really fun. I, I like it. I mean, the other day, because I was really bored, I put on uh trilby's review of it oh dear no we do not we do not like trilby in this house um (laughs) but yeah mm, mm. i'm not i've never been a huge fan of him and like his review was pretty much like his review was pretty much like oh it was exactly what i wanted from this story and it was exactly how i imagined it would be and like okay then that's pretty high standards. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, no, uh, but like out of time was it was it was fun. Like I said, it was simple. Um, there there are some really fun doctor interactions there, um, and actually some some really sweet doctor interactions too. They talk a bit about Sarah Jane, um, so that's really oh, nice. Uh, and 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 for, and for four, it takes place post Deadly Assassin, so he's only just left Sarah. Oh, oh, that's so that's awesome. So they're both yeah. in edge oh, mode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, I listened to one exchange because he played clips of it in his review, um, where it just fucking had me dying, dude. Like <laughs> he, he what, basically what says, he, he he basically says, "Please tell me I haven't developed a hero complex in my old age." <laughs> and I, I fucking <laughs> lost my shit. I said, "Oh." Oh, no. uh, and then I immediately thought of Connor. <laughs> uh, oh, what did you think of uh, Master Thief and Lesser Evils? Master Thief? I haven't listened to them yet. Ah, gotcha. I've got them sitting on my phone. They're downloaded, but like I said, I'm, I think, I don't think I said this on the fucking thing we're doing. I... I'm reading Night the Fool and the Dead first. Oh, also, apparently there's, like, some big thing at the ending. I don't know what it is at the end of Night the Fool and the Dead, but people are really pissed because... that they have to wait. People are really pissed they have to wait till December for All Flesh is Grass. I mean, I'm like, ah, so I should be happy that my copy is delayed. <laughs> well, I mean, I've flipped through it, so I've seen glimpses of some stuff. I'm kind of... <laughs> I do this every time, and like I never learn my lesson. I see glimpses of really cool things that I should have just left alone. <laughs> I, that happened but, for me with um with First Frontier. I like I like sk- I like skimmed through First Frontier. I mean, I already knew the master was in it, but I didn't want to know like how it was revealed. And of course, it's like the very end of a chapter, and he does the whole "I am referred to as the master" universally, and that's how the chapter ends. Um, I was like, so, so I saw that like a hundred pages before I actually got to it. And I was like, shit. <laughs> But yeah, like, as I was closing the back of the book, I caught a glimpse of the last page, and I was like, fuck. Uh, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. I'm, I know. I'm not, I wasn't going to spoil it for you. I was just saying, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. So has Tom Baker already uh, injured himself with this I point of the so. story? Yeah, yeah, because this, w- this with, with the way he with the way he was climbing up. Oh yeah, he's already holding the scarf that way. That's right. Well, that's also that. 
particular bit isn't Tom Baker. Oh, this shit. What is this shit? This fucking experiment that he's doing. <laughs> Um, I think he he's experimenting to see how much they can resist, how much they can lift, because they don't want to kill their friend. And then he's also test alongside that, he's testing how strong the human chest cavity is. Mm. By just are increasing any, the are, weight. Are there some Taran voice purists out there? I know I, I know they exist for Daleks and Cybermen and shit like that, but are there some Taran voice Am I purists? a Dalek voice? Am I a Dalek voice? Y- yes, purist? you are a Dalek and Cyberman voice purist, Brian. Very Am much I so. really? You are. <laughs> you get so pissy about the slightest like little uh, uh, little slip ups in Dalek and Cyberman voices. Give me, give me. An I remember, I remember your rant after. I want to say it was was it Hour of the Cybermen. One of the Cyberman voices was fucked up, and you're like, oh. "Does it sound like the Cyberman? It should have." And, <laughs> and uh, it's really funny. <laughs> and Daleks. I mean, I've heard a million Dalek rants from you about anything that isn't Nicholas Briggs. <laughs> um, I like the '70s Dalek voices. I like the ones in Remembrance, and that's about it. <laughs> Actually, the day of the Daleks voices are shit, but I think that's something everyone agrees on. I'm okay with them. I mean, I, I mean, I like them, but as Dalek voices, they're shit. I have the same issue with Dalek Invasion of Earth. But back I to my like, original, back to my original question, though. Do you think I do some like Taran the Daleks, the Chase, and Master Plan, as well as Power and Evil? Though they're all hmm. pretty good in that. And I'm only drawing this out because I know you are bored to fucking tears by it. <laughs> it's fine. But are there some Taran voice purists out there? I feel like um, there are. I don't think that you can have some Taran voice purists. Well, I mean, like, I, I, I'm not saying, like, I'm one, but I, but I don't like the some Taran voices in Invasion of Time. You just have to go a bit husky, don't you? Yeah, give, basically. Give, give and, me and, your and best Santaran. And then for some reason, Invasion of Time, they go all whispery. It's weird. Give, Joey, give me your best Santaran. I don't think I've ever... I, I've, I've given Dan Starkey a try once or twice, but I've never, like... See, I just sort of have my yeah. own Santaran voice. I think I've heard you do it, but only in reference to uh, to the glory of the Santaran Empire me. <laughs> That I just saw you share again today. <laughs> <laughs> I love that piece so much. It's so stupid, but it's fucking great. <laughs> Hello, my fellow clones. Oh, by the glory of the Santaran Empire! Here, I'm looking at it right now. Here, I'll give it a shot with the meme. <clears throat> Greetings, fellow clone warrior! How goes the... By the glory of the Santaran Empire! <laughs> yeah. You've got it. They're really easy to do. Yeah. It's not fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Because so many actors have played the Suntarans, and it's not just one. Unless you count Dan Starkey, but even then, Dan Starkey changes his voice enough between different Santarans that they don't sound like the same character. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the Santarans don't have one voice, so they're pretty easy to do. Oh, I'm almost done with part five of Scales. Voice. Yeah. So finally, in the home stretch, I only have two episodes. I'll only have two episodes left. Actually, I think I have enough editing done on part six and seven because I've touched on those a bit that I could technically consider like as like as far as like amount of days put into the project, I could probably consider part five done. As far as like amount of work done, if that makes any sense. Ooh, this fight scene. I hate this. I just now what is that? that, That's uh. 
That's Stuart Fell, right? Doing Tom Baker? Yeah, no, that is. I just hate the cuts between obviously not Tom Baker and Tom Baker. Well, I kind of <laughs> do too. That's so but shit. It's so I, I, noticeable. I, I do too, but only on the on the like uh, on the wide shots when you could tell that like Stuart Fell is the same height as Kevin Lindsay. <laughs> Well, that's Stuart Fell right there. Mm-hmm. I, there are a lot of shots in this story which are really badly done just because you can tell that it's not Tom Baker. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, they sort of had to do it. Like, I, I understand it, but ooh, it does not look good. Oh, oh, I never even told you. Um, Speaking of Santaran voices, um, I had this guy who... Big shot Ooh. of his face. Wow. Oh, of Stuart Fells. Oh, I wasn't even looking. Damn it, I was looking for something on my phone. Shit. Um, but uh, but I had this guy um, who I guess has worked with Aaliyah before. I don't know, on, on some other fan project. And she was, like, talking with him and, like, pointing him in my direction. I was like, oh, okay, what's up? Um, and he saw that we were doing adaptations. And he was like, hey, uh, did you plan on doing Shakedown eventually? I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, eventually, obviously. And he's like, oh, cool, because I was one of the original Santarans in the Shakedown BBV film. I was like, oh shit, no really? Fucking way. Yeah, 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 no it was so fucking cool. Way. He said, yeah, he said he was 17 Bullshit. when he did it. Bull no, not, not even kidding. I don't I, believe you. I will send you a link to his account. Oh my fuck, dude. Charles Winford. There Ooh. we go. Excellent, excellent God chat. Damn. So he wants to be a Santaran for Shakedown then? Hell yeah. I mean, Shakedown yeah. is, is, is a way down the road, but, if, but you know, is it'd be the, really fun. Is there, like, be... a main Santaran in Shakedown? Um, there is. I forget his name. Um, he but there has is a main to play if He <laughs> has to fucking play him if he's still up for it. That, Here, just... dude, that would be so fucking cool. Right. <laughs> oh. How about that Santaran melting effect, though? Oh, right? I love it when classic monsters, for no reason, just fucking deflate. Like the Mondasian side yeah. men in the temple. <laughs> yeah, and the, and, the, and the sea devils and warriors of the deep. Well, the sea devils is sort of explained... And it looks and, and it does look slightly cooler than just, you know, a balloon deflating. Yeah. Like pus <laughs> literally starts leaking out of its eyes. <laughs> but I, I just can't get over those tenth planet Cybermen when they fucking deflate at the end of the tenth planet. <laughs> There's one image of it that looks really creepy, but the rest are just sort of like eh. You know, I've only seen the the telesnap of Tenth Planet Four once and i don't know i forget what it actually looks like i only know the animation at this point um let me try to look it up (laughs) the cybermen just crumbled to fucking dust for no reason what's in the here wait Ooh, the daleks the daleks sort of deflate in um resurrection if you think about it because by the time they're all done spewing out that white stuff like their casings are all like bent and shit see i I would i would think more of dalek's master plan at the end there when uh uh when the time destructor uh, that time destructor like reverses them because they kind of deflate there they deflate in dalek's invasion earth 2150 AD to... I still have not seen the Peter Cushing films. You should watch Dalek's Invasion Earth 2150 AD. It's the only oh, good one. Okay. I want to do Doc, uh, Doctor Who and the Daleks. And it, ha- it has Bernard Cribbins in it. I'm aware. I'm aware. Isn't he and David he or is he just one of the other... Is he just one of the other, other freedom fighters? Um, he's, he's not a freedom fighter. He's the Ian stand-in. Oh... Oh, wait, really? Yeah, so Barbara and Ian don't actually appear in Dalek's Invasion Earth. Because what? they go off and 
they go off and get married at the end of Doctor Who and the Daleks. Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. This is the end of the episode. Fuck me. Okay. Oh, fuck. Um... Oh, shit. No. Oh. Oh. Ah!